Hey movie fans, as a diehard Superman fan, it should come as no surprise that one of my most anticipated movies, potentially of all time, is James Gunn's Superman Legacy, the quasi-reboot reinvention to the Superman mythos. Now granted, this movie's not coming out until July 2025, so we are a long way off, but I'm still waiting eagerly every single day to get any little snippet of news I can get about this movie. And now that the writers and actor strikes have concluded and productions have kind of ramped back up, it's only a matter of time before we get more castings, potentially an actual look at the Superman suit, just more behind the scenes stuff from this production. But before we get too deep into all of that official stuff, let's have some fun with a wish list, why don't we? So what I want to do today is look at the top five things that I want to see in James Gunn's Superman Legacy. Now none of these are major like plot story elements or specific characters that I'm looking for, just things as a Superman fan that I have wanted to see for either a long time or seen in a different way that they've been presented in years past. At number five, I want a different approach to flying for the character of Superman. It's not just because I thought previous versions have done it poorly. I thought the Christopher Reeve one is iconic. It is the whole tagline of the movie of you will believe a man can fly. I like how Zack Snyder presented flying in much more of the modern epic blockbuster style. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But the problem is in this landscape of superheroes everywhere you look, there's a lot of flying superheroes, but Superman is supposed to be the OG. What are we going to do this time around to not just showcase Superman's flying abilities, but his other superpowers that makes him stand out from everyone else? What makes him unique? How are we going to visually illustrate how his power set, what makes him different than everyone else. We've seen so much of very specific style. Looking at you, Black Adam, with the weird stretched warped head. How are we gonna make flying different? I want to believe a man can fly again, just like the original Christopher Reeve movie. How are we going to achieve that? Are we gonna just go with a standard character flying around? I hope not. It won't be the end of the world if it, that's the case. That's why it's just number five but I want a new refreshing way for a character to engage with flying. It should be cool. It should be characters and kids looking and going, wow, I wish I could do that as opposed to just another novelty of, okay, everyone else in the world can do it. Flying should be fun. Let's make it fun. At number four, I want to focus on Clark Kent, the human being. I like the Superman side of stuff. I like the big superpowers, the big bombastic action set pieces. But what makes Superman special is that Clark Kent is a good person. I want to focus on the Clark side of things, the humanity side of things. I feel like that was missing from the Zack Snyder movies, but to be fair, we do get a lot more of the Clark Kent side of things in the Batman vs Superman extended edition, the ultimate cut or whatever we want to call that. That whole movie, he has this subplot where he's being a journalist for the Daily Planet and doing his old mission about finding out Batman, yada yada yada. I think Zack Snyder was on something there. I want more reporter Clark. I want to see his day to day. How does he hide his identity from everyone else. It's the whole Tobey Maguire of just like, I hunch. I, I want the the hunching Clark Kent, the, the bumbling goof to try and throw everyone off. I love dorky Clark. This will not be the last time that I mentioned this, but I want James Gunn to take a lot of inspiration from Superman and Lois. Y'all, if you are not watching that show, I continue to sing that show's praises, but Tyler Hecklin is a fantastic Superman, but he's an even better Clark. He's strong for his family when he needs to be, but he also is a hundred percent that dorky idiot when he needs to be. I want that. I want the different levels to Clark. As much as I love Henry Cavill, I never got the sense that he was the... I never got an interesting sense of who his Clark was. It was all very much of getting him to the Superman point. And that's more of, we didn't get enough time with Henry Cavill Superman. I think Warner Brothers completely ripped him off. I think he could have been one of the best Superman of all time, but we didn't get enough time with him for Zack Snyder or whoever else was gonna tell his stories to properly flesh out the character. I wanna focus on Clark just as much as we focus on Superman. What makes Batman Begins by Christopher Nolan so special is we take forever to get to Batman. We spend at least a solid 45 to almost an hour of time with Bruce Wayne getting him to the point that we're ready to see him on screen as Batman. We're just as interested in the Bruce Wayne stuff as we are in the Batman stuff. I want the same thing with Clark. I want people to see that Clark is a good person. Is he old fashioned? Is he got that old school mentality? 
Yes, but that is what people love about Chris Evans' Captain America. If it can translate to him, I think it can translate to Superman. Make people care about Clark again. Then the Superman stuff can follow after. At number three, I have an interesting non-Lex slash Zod villain. Please, for the love of God, can we do a Superman villain that isn't Lex or Zod? There's nothing particularly wrong with those guys. I think Gene Hackman was a Lex Luthor that we got. I, I've gone on record saying I hated his Lex Luthor. It's not great. I didn't think Jesse Eisenberg was particularly better. And then the guy that was in Superman Returns, that's all collectively agreed to never talk about that one again. Michael Shannon was fine as Zod. Terrence Stamp is still the best Zod. But we get a lot of Lex. We get a lot of Zod. And I think people just kind of think of those guys as the big Superman villains. But there's plenty of others that we can draw from. There's always been rumors for years about Brainiac making an appearance. But even just rule out Brainiac. Save him for later. Make him the Thanos of the DC Universe for Phase 1. Hint at him in Superman. Show him in full in Supergirl. And then bring him in later. Later on, but take Brainiac out of the equation. You still have guys like Mongol, Metallo, Bizarro, Mr. Mixix Pitalik. Parasite could be a lot of fun. Show other Superman villains besides the ones that we've already gotten. It's just like how with Batman, we get Joker time and time again. And that's fine. We eventually have to get there. And we eventually have to get to Lex, obviously. But let's show some other villains. Let's let's give them their time to shine because. We've gotten the same ones over and over and over again. And I think it'd be cool if James Gunn, in his weird and wacky way of telling stories, took a swing at a parasite or a mongol because he loves his obscure characters. Just something besides a generic bald guy for now. And I'm saying this as someone that really likes the character of Lex Luthor. At number two, we have a somewhat controversial one, but let me know your thoughts on this one if you think I'm crazy or not. I really, really, really would love to see a universe where both Ma and Pa Kent are alive to see Clark become Superman. Even if it's just for a little bit, even if we have Pa Kent die after Clark's been Superman for like two or three years, I just want them both to be alive long enough to see their son become the great man that they raise. I understand why in previous versions, Paw Kent is killed off early to motivate Superman in one way or another. In the Christopher Reeve one, it's to kind of teach him that, yes, death will eventually happen. You can't save everyone. And in the Zack Snyder version, it's the, your choices are important. You can't always save everyone. Choice is a big thing of where you are as a person and as a potential godlike figure to other people. But I wanted to see both Pa and Ma Kent alive long enough. I think Clark is unabashedly a mama's boy. He loves his parents. And I think that is so rare for superheroes. You always got that angst of either dead parents with Spider-Man or Batman. But for a while there in the comics, he was allowed to be close with his parents. Smallville wasn't just where he grew up. Besides the Fortress of Solitude, Smallville was allowed to be his fortress away from everything else of the world is too crazy i'm gonna go back home and relax for a little bit and just talk to my parents i want that relationship there then later on if we want the emotional weight then we can kill off ma or pa kent later on let's just let superman have nice things at least for a little bit we don't need a death to motivate the character going forward his motivation in this version at least should just be be good for the sake of being good. I don't know. I don't want to overcomplicate things. Lastly, my number one most requested. I need to see this on the big screen at some point in my life. So why not make it be James Gunn's Superman legacy? I need at least at some point, even if it's just for a little bit, Superman to have a homemade suit either made by himself or more importantly, made by his mother. One of my all-time favorite moments in comics, not just in any Superman story, but just in comics in general, is from Superman for all seasons, when he swoops down and saves a kid, and it's his first appearance as Superman. He's all dressed to the nines in his superhero costume, and the kid looks up at him and goes, wow, cool costume. And his Superman, and his big, goofy, cheesy grin, looks down and goes, thanks, my mom made it for me, and flies away to save another, save the day somewhere else. It was so good, in fact, that they just copied that verbatim for the opening of Superman and Lois. There you go, friend. Thanks. Cool costume. Thanks. My mom made it for me. It's just such a good moment that it exemplifies who Clark is is he's a dork he's a mama's boy and he's proud of it but also i understand that Zack snyder 
made the suit symbolic in Man of Steel. It represents the Kryptonian side of it. Cool. For this version, I would like a suit that represents a little bit of both. The House of L symbol with the S. Cool. But make it material that his mom makes. I've always loved the element, whether it's Smallville or Superman and Lois or in the comics, of his mom making the suit as a thing of we will always be with you. It's him literally wearing his heart on his sleeve. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal to some, but to me, I think that's one of the most overlooked aspects of Superman. It's like, yes, this is a representation of the character, of what he stands for. It's bright, it's colorful, it's in your face, it's cheesy, but that's exactly the point. And the fact that it's homemade just adds to that charm. Even if it's not like the, the red trunks and the blue spandex and the red cape, if we go even like the Superman Man of Tomorrow route where it's like a bomber jacket and a goggles and helmet of some kind, some form of a starter suit, a homemade version of a suit at some point that leads us to a Superman suit. Well, what did you guys think? What are some things that you want to see more than anything else in James Gunn's Superman Legacy? Are you excited for Superman Legacy? You're kind of, eh, I'm burnt out on superhero stuff. Whatever your thoughts, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you see and you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. And as always, Stay sharp, movie guys and gals.